In our seventh tutorial, we are asked what to predict. To learn about building a predictive models, let's go back to the Titanic dataset. This data is somewhat simpler and does not need a lot of preparation, but we still need to specify which column we want to predict. We're going to go to our Titanic dataset, retrieve it, and then we're going to click next. Add product details to transactions. Interesting, product details. This might be a bug. Drag the Titanic data into the process. Now hover the mouse over the output port and wait for a small window to pop out. We already mentioned this, and if it doesn't show up for you, click on the process. If you double click, you create a comment. We don't need a comment right now. So hover here, then click F3, and then you'll have a window that you can drag and analyze. We're going to take note of two columns, role and type. So type is the type of data and role is missing right now. So it's missing for all the attributes. Now in the explanation, each attribute has a type which defines the possible values in it, but the role of the attribute describes how the column is used by machine learning operators. Attributes without any role are also called regular attributes and they are used as input for training while ID attributes are usually ignored by modeling algorithms because they are only used as unique identifiers of observations of data. One sort of our ID is probably ticket number, maybe even our name. But let's skip that for now and focus on the tutorial itself. Next, add a discretized by binning operator. We search for it, discretize by binning, find it and drag it into our process. Then we connect it. Set the attribute filter type to single, i.e. you only work on one of the attributes, set the attributes to age, and set the number of bins to three. So single, attribute is age, number of bins, three. There we go. Next, add the set role operator and connect and connect it. In parameters for attribute name, survive, change the target role to label. So we're gonna set, we're gonna search for set role, drag it, connect it, then set our role of the attribute survive to label. Then we're gonna run the process. I'm gonna click fix, connect it, then run. As you can see, our survived uh, attribute now has a green background, which leads us to believe that somehow this attribute is different from the others. As you can see, we assigned that this attribute is the label itself. What does it mean to be a label? Let's see if the tutorial explains. That means that that attribute itself is going to be predicted by our algorithm. So let's go ahead and finish the tutorial. Great work! Setting an attribute role is useful for many things, e.g. for identifying ID-like attributes or example weights. But the most frequent use is to define the label, i.e. which attribute should be predicted based on the other attribute. Now the challenges stand like this. Look at the age column in the results again. What are the numerical borders for three bins that we've created? If we go to our results, then go to statistics, then go to age, we can see our first bin is from 26 to 53, our second from minus infinity to 26, and the last one is from 53 to positive infinity. We could have also figured that out in the statistics tab if we looked at the values. So the range goes from 26.7 to 53. And keep in mind, these ranges are sorted based on how many, um, how many rows fall into those ranges. So if we wanted to mention them in order, it's going to be minus infinity to 26, then from 26 to 53, then from, then from 53 to plus infinity. If we click on details, we can see such order. Change the process so that age and passenger fare are discretized into five bins. So if we want to change the process, we need to go back to design, click on discretize, 
then click on number of bins, actually select the number of bins, then input five. But we want but we want to also do more attributes. If we go uh, and change this from single into a subset and then select all the attributes we want to discretize, which is going to be age and the passenger fare, then apply. We're going to keep the five, run the process, and we're going to see that the passenger fare now also has been discretized. And if we go ahead and click on details, we're going to see what ranges we have right here. And if we sort by nominal value, we're going to see the ranges in order. What other roles beside ID and labels are available in the set role operator? Well, let's go ahead and see. We have the regular, which all of our attributes that are not assigned a label go to as default. We have ID, we have label, and then we have prediction, cluster, weight, and batch. Now, you might not know what all of these mean. But here comes help. So make it a bit bigger, then scroll down, and then we can see all the descriptions of the target role that we have. Since I do know these, I'm going to let you read more about them within help. I'm going to save this tutorial, and that's going to be it for tutorial number seven. I'll see you in the eighth one.